Hello, everyone out there. Welcome to another awesome episode of the Coach's Corner. Getting all of our coaches to join us here real quick. First off, we'd like to welcome uh, Ulrich, our newest coach that we've added to the Coach's Corner. How are you doing this evening? I'm great. It's great to be here. I'm honored to be here amongst this august group of fine individuals. We are honored to have you with us as well. <laughs> so tonight's topic, these fine coaches are going to talk to us about how they evaluate candidates for knighthood in the SCA. Uh, they have some questions gathered ahead of time. And of course, we will be watching the comments for all of your questions live. With that, I'm going to hand it off to His Grace Eliyahu to get this started. Thank you. And um, tonight with us, uh, I'm Duke Eliyahu from the Midrealm. We have His Majesty Sean from Artemisia, uh, uh, His Grace Elanon from the Kingdom of, I forget where you moved to. One of those eight kingdoms. To. You've moved around so much. <laughs> and uh, as Saib said, uh, we're welcoming uh, Ulrich uh, from Meridies, uh, for to Coach's Corner for the first time. So um, I want to establish one thing, first of all. There will be two episodes. The second episode will be about how kingdoms, what kingdom the kingdom's processes are for evaluating candidates for the order of chivalry and elevating them because it differs widely among kingdoms. But tonight's episode is how individuals evaluate candidates to make their recommendation to the crown that a candidate be elevated. And each of the four of us have also sat the throne and so have seen it from both sides and have some perspective on that as well as our own methods and um so that's what we're talking about that's the first thing two episodes every member of the order has their own method and i would like to try to once and for all dispel the notion that a candidate can be blackballed i've heard that ever since i started in the sca and it just i've been i've lived in three different kingdoms i've visited 15 different kingdoms i it is it just doesn't occur uh that i have seen so i haven't seen everything but i've seen a lot so um other than that shall we get started um sean would you like to start yeah sure um <clears throat> So part of this discussion is um, how, or this segment of this discussion is how we individually um, assess um, knighthood candidates or candidates for the chivalry and the, the types of things that we're looking for. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the things that I'm always telling people, if, if you wanna know what it takes to, to, to be a knight, uh, you should start with the textbook definition um, and that's to go to Kapora and look at what it says in Kapora. And what you'll find, um, you know, there there is there is these segments on what it takes to be a peer, uh, and then there is uh, specifications for each of the individual orders, and for the order of the chivalry, it says that they must be um, equal to um, their prospective peers uh, with uh, weapons with uh, certain certain weapons, um, and and you know the 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 question that comes up and for this episode is how good is good enough. Um, what weapons does that entail? Um, and, and, you know, some of those things and each kingdom has different ways of evalu evaluating those things. Some kingdoms have um, a greater emphasis on weapons depth or other things. And we're going to get into that in the next episode on, um, on, on kingdom differences. Um, so I know for me, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and throw out some of the stuff that I'm looking for, uh, uh, you know, or, or how, how I evaluate um, I, honestly, I have, I have two different evaluations. Uh, I have one for my squires and my students, and I have an evaluation for, um, for others that are, that are not squired to me. And the reason that that is different for me 
is because I have a fairly high standard of what I expect of my squires. Um, and for, for me, that, that, that definition is like, I, I, because I'm so close to them, I have a hard time uh, being objective because um, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll see that somebody is fighting me, one of my squires is fighting me particularly well, but that doesn't mean that they've, they, they've met that bar. And so for my squires, the standard that I've always had for them is simply that they will not be accepted into the order. They will be demanded into the order. And that means that when, when uh, my peers in the order come to me and say, it is time for your squire to be knighted, um, then, then that's, that's when I will uh, allow, them, allow them to be knighted. And I don't, um, I don't have, you know, I don't, I don't have that standard and this is where it gets into other, other fighters. I never have believed in this idea that a fighter should be able to beat X number of chivalry or X number of royalty, X number of times. I've, I've heard, you know, you should be able to beat 50% of the knights, 50% of the time, or that's that sort of stuff. And for me, that's just that, like, that's even that's kind of, you know, it's somewhat arbitrary and it's somewhat specific at the same time because what happens when this guy comes in and, and he takes count of all the knights in the kingdom and says, I can beat all these guys 50% of the time. Um, for, for me, that one of the things that I'm looking for when I'm evaluating other candidates is um, I need to be threatened. I, I, I need to be, when I'm fighting this individual, I need to know that I can't just mail it in. Um, that, that I have to have concern that if I make a mistake or if I'm just screwing around, that this is person that is just going to, just going to blast me. Um, and so that, that is part of my measure. Part of it too is, uh, an understanding and a comprehension of our sport and being able to explain what we do, uh, to other fighters. Um, and so it's, it's a, it's a comprehension rather than just an application. There are a lot of people that can go out there and just throw sticks and, and hit people. Um, but if they don't understand why what they do is working, then they, well, among other things, it's not repeatable and it's not transferable. Your, your skill as a knight should be repeatable and, and transferable. The, the fights you win, you should be winning um, through pure skill, not just because the guys, somebody else happened to fall on your sword but it needs to be transferable. You need to be able to teach it to, to other people. And, and there's, there's more, and I'm sure we'll get into it, but I, I think I'm going to go ahead and pass this on to uh, Alan on and, and get his uh, initial take. Thank you, your majesty. <clears throat> um, my particular bar for the order of the chivalry and my particular bar for uh, other things, uh, because, because I've been, honored to serve on a throne, I've had the opportunity to evaluate all the peerages. And I definitely have a thought in mind, you know, sort of the peerage bar. And, you know, I want uh, candidates for the chivalric order to meet the peerage bar. You know, they don't have to meet it's the same way as the other peerages, but there's a minimum level of a stewardship for the society that I want out of everyone. Um, you know, does that mean, uh, you know, serving as a kingdom officer no that's a high bar that's not everyone can do that that's uh, we don't want everyone that can to do that um you know it's a hard job and it, it, it's a demanding job now i'm really grateful that there's so many people who do that um but you know i look i look at this minimum level of stewardship of the society meaning you know can they tell someone who's relatively new about the sca and what it means um, you know, do they have an understanding of what the SCA is and a little bit of its history? And then most importantly, when they see a need, can they get the need met? Whether they physically go do it, say you're at an event and you see that something needs done, you know, do they handle it? You know, and, and there's many peer-like ways you can handle uh, seeing something needs doing. You can either do it, you can get someone to do it. Perhaps you're too busy. Perhaps you actually have another task already, but you see something that needs done and you make sure that it gets done. Um, you know, that's the minimum level sort of, 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 you know, the idea that I have between, you know, being a steward of the society. You know, you, you see a need, you make sure it gets taken care of. Uh, you know, you, you know where to get the help, you, you know, if you can't do it yourself. 
Um, and then so circling that back onto uh, the Order of the Chivalry, I, I, I look for that. One of the first things I look for whenever we start talking about a candidate or whenever we start looking at a candidate, um, you know, because if they're not a peer, well, then they're not a knight or they're not a master um, of, uh, a, you know, a master of chivalry. So um, get that out of the way. And then we look at the other things that are important. And I think most every member of the Order of the Chivalry's idea and bars and standards change over time. I know mine have changed over time. I, I'm pretty sure I came into it and it's like, well, everyone needs to be able to, you know, at the minimum, they need to be able to fight me well or beat me. And they, you know, they, you know, and the people that I thought that I had to beat, you know, well, they need to do very well at that too. And, you know, they need to have a minimum level of whatever service that I had done. I think I'd been a marshal and I'd been a local seneschal, you know, it's like, um, you know, and I had autocratic events and, and I had all this stuff about me wrapped up into how I was going to judge um, the uh, worthiness of, of candidates. And fortunately, you know, my ass mellowed over time and realized that, you know, each of the candidates, while it's my responsibility as a peer to evaluate and to recommend to the crown, um, you know, I'm, it's not about me. That's, that's not, it's not, you know, I am not some bar that they have to be measured against. And, um, you know, it's, they don't certainly don't have to beat me. I realized at one point going in, I remember early on in a the circle, there were a couple of Dukes saying, well, these guys, this guy doesn't do very well against us. And I'm like, oh my gosh, almost none of us do very well against you. None of us are knights, you know, it's, uh, you know, and I certainly had that in mind. And then I've also had that brought back to my attention. It's like, man, we're, we got to have some bar. And it's like, well, you're right. You got to have some bar. If that's your bar, that's you, you know, but I don't think, and I don't recommend to the rest of the order that you make yourself the personal bar. Um, you try to understand what is the minimum or whatever the average or whatever it is you're looking for within your kingdom, you know, and hopefully it's something, you know, that resembles that same thing across the society because you're made a knight of the society, not a knight of your specific kingdom. Um, so, you know, it's changed over time. It doesn't necessarily have to reflect me anymore. Matter of fact, I'm appalled when it is about me at all anymore. And I have to have a self-reflection and get back to making it about the candidate. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely, you know, because I've had the good fortune to now move across the society and li live in a couple of different kingdoms and to see how some of the orders work in more than just the two kingdoms I've lived in. Um, you know, I, I try to have a very open mind about, you know, well, what, where is the order today and how does this candidate meet whatever the current bar is? And, you know, it shouldn't be the bar that it was 10 years ago. And I shouldn't be trying to guess what the bar is going to be in five years from now. It's, you know, well, what, what is it today? And do those people meet that? And so I'll go ahead and hit my, my big hot take of the thing over time. Um, it, the bar or meeting or becoming, a, a peer, whether it's the order of the chivalry or any of the other, uh, three, any of the other three, um, it doesn't actually mean that much to me anymore. It used to mean a lot and now it doesn't. And now I'm much more interested in, you know, what kind of peer the person's going to be rather than did they meet the minimum qualifications of a peer today? And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm always trying, I, I'm willing to take chances on people I think are going to be great peers that are going to give back a whole lot to the SCA, not just hit that minimum and, and live that minimum life. So, um, you know, I, I, it's taken me some time to reconcile how I feel with that, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very glad that people become and are made peers or get knighted. Um, but the thing that most interests me is their journey after that. So I, my own personal tendency is to look more for the ceiling rather than, you know, where they are or where, I, if is this where they're always going to be? I'm always, I'm very much interested in if people are going to wind up being great knights one day. So. I'll lean that way and I'll be more in favor of someone I see that potential in perhaps more so than I would, um, you know, someone who's right there at it today. So those are my initial takes and let's take this torch, toss it on to, uh, his excellency. Yep. Well, hey, great to follow that. Thanks. Um, a little bit of full disclosure. I came up under Elon. Um, I was his, his champion and spent a lot of time, 
listening and studying at the Tao of uh, His Grace, but uh, it 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 impacts things. Um, I'm really trying to be super serious about this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make a, a bit of a quip. But it's true. There's an old saying about porn. It's hard to des describe, but you know it when you see it. It's the same same way with with chivalry and knighthood. It's hard to describe sometimes, but you know it when you see it. Um, prowess, you know. <clears throat> sorry, it's the first thing that gets you in the door. If we, you know, if you don't have have the prowess, if you don't have the fighting ability, then we're talking about possibly a different peerage. That's you know that's what talks to you about about becoming a knight or a uh, or a master, as the case may be. Um, my uh, my personal level on that is if I'm watching them and they're doing well on the war field on on the the tourney field, if they're competing well not necessarily winning all the time but competing well if they are um uh, to to make it a little bit about about my own personal level is if i'm not sleeping on on them if i'm not if i'm paying attention are they still a threat to me are they just they don't have to beat me all the time they don't have to beat me half the time but if i'm paying attention are they still you know capable of beating me and if they are then they're in the conversation for me um, but that just gets the conversation started on this peerage. The rest of it is all of the other tenets of chivalry that, that come into this, all the other requirements, all the other um, virtues that, that we talk about. And yes, those matter to me. They're required in corpora, by the way. Um, you know, so they are something that, that, that comes into it. Um, and that's, that's the big thing for me. Uh, Elon uses uh, uh, a phrase and he used it here just a minute ago. Are they a steward of the society? If something happened and their local shire, you know, went down, could you toss or they moved? Could you toss them into an area and, and a group form around them? Could, could they help a group form? They don't have to do all the stuff. They don't have to be the seneschal, but could they hold that portion and help people in a new area? And those, those things, teaching, all that stuff matters. All that stuff comes into it. And if they're not already doing some of that on some level, then, you know, then they need to learn how. If they can't teach what we do, then they're going to fail in a portion of, of, of what our job is. Um, and it's a job. Uh, and that's, you know, those are the things that get my conversation started. And if we can do that, then, you know, maybe they're stealing sign up. Uh, one other quick thing, Sean, you, you hit on something. So... I know it's a second uh, a second episode, but uh, here in, in Meridies, we often bring up our own. We only bring up our own, our, our own guys, and your your definition for that is absolutely spot on. I don't. We don't talk about our our own until some other night in the kingdom is like, hey, when are you going to bring up so and so? And that's that's when that's when that line is crossed for me. Yeah, and I, I know for me with with my squires in particular, um, I want them to gain their own renown, um, you know, and and I want I, I I want the the rest of the order to come to me, and and tell me that it's that it's time, and and I can tell you that, uh, be, and I I can say this because I've told all of them, um, pretty much every one of my squires that has been knighted to to this point, I've had seven of my former squires that have been knighted, and every one of them had been brought up at some point uh, early on and uh, I shot them down uh, because they did not meet the standards to which we agreed. Um, and, and, you know, but my guys also know that, that I am the hardest possible path to, uh, to chivalry in our kingdom. Um, and, and yeah, I want them to, to gain their own renown. I don't, I don't, and that was a question that, that got brought up in, uh, in the, in the, the live stream here, you know, about, um, you know, if, uh, you know, if, if a, a, a knight has a, has a dependent, um, who they're, you know, who, uh, if I don't think one of my squires is ready, uh, because, because when they become squire to me, they are, you know, we have a standard and that standard simply is, yeah, you'll be accepted in the order, not, or you'll be demanded. You won't be accepted. It's not going to be, oh, okay, well, we haven't knighted somebody in a while. So let's go ahead and knight this guy. Um, and I want them to have their own renown. I want I want people to, to come to me and say we it's time to it's time uh, to tonight this guy. And I've I've seen that actually 
both ways. Um, more often than not, where because the question was whether the rest of the order would defer to a knight if they say that their dependent, their squire is not ready. I've seen it both ways, when, and, and it is a case-by-case -case basis. It depends on who that knight is, because there are some who are um, doing, as you, as you both said, requiring that their squires, the rest of the order demand that their squire be elevated. But I've seen some knights who, are, who take that too far and are, are exerting too much control over a squire's renown, making it about them rather than about their squire and their squire's elevation. So I've seen it both ways, and it's a case-by-case -case basis. The rest of the, the knights are not uniform, and all the knights know that. The members of the order don't treat everyone's voice equally. Some people are, some members of the order are more persuasive and their weight, their words carry more weight and more gravitas than others. And um, I have some things to say. Before I do, uh, Ulrich, I wanted to mention that the phrase, I know porn, I don't know what porn is, but I know it when I see it, was first said by Justice Potter Stewart, Supreme Court, Justice Potter Stewart in 1964 in Jacobellis v. Ohio. So I just wanted to, give you some context there. Um, he, was, he was right then and we're right now. Yes. So, um, so uh, it's I'm not the first place I heard it. Oh, wait, we probably don't want to talk about that. Never mind. Go <laughs> on. Go ahead. You drink minimum. That's, that's a different, that's a different episode. Um, and probably not for this channel, but um, so I'm a member of the order of chivalry and the order of the Pelican, but I was also um, trained as an artist um, and so I've, I'm a member of two orders, but I've also, as we all have, sat the throne and had to evaluate candidates that I recommend to the crown to be elevated and crown to be elevated. And also as crown had to evaluate whether those candidates were sufficient for me to elevate. So the, the method I apply, first of all, I agree about somebody needing to be a peer. And I've also heard a peer is someone who can be dropped into an area and they the S, will sustain the SCA. When I was an unbelt, a knight said to me as encouragement, he said, it's far easier for a gentleman to learn to sword fight than it is for a sword fighting barbarian to, to become civilized and become a gentleman. And <clears throat> so I think, I think it may be easier, but, it, but I've seen it go both ways. I knew people who have been very rough around the edges and have become absolutely fine exemplars of the order of chivalry. Um, but somebody does have to have a certain level of what we used to call being a lady or a gentleman. And I mean that in the sense of courteous and polite and and truthful and all those other chivalric issues that has to exist. <clears throat> it's when we talk about, and, and there's often disagreements about somebody's skill at fighting, but agreements about their, what people have come to call peer-like qualities. Um, and sometimes there's agreement on their ability to fight, but disagreement about their peer-like qualities. <clears throat> all of those have to be there. When it comes to evaluating how someone fights, I apply the same measure or the same evaluation to prowess in any order, whether it's prowess in service, in art, or in fighting. <clears throat> um, um, the beginning of mastery is when a person has, understands the tools they have, understands how to apply them, how to apply them correctly, when to apply them, in what order to apply them, in order to create their art, their service, their fighting, or so on. And they're not still struggling. I mean, they're advancing their, their tools, but they're not struggling with how to put them together, or they're not simply 
taking a bag of tools and throwing it at, at a pile of wood and expecting to make a chair. They are applying them in a precise order and in a precise way and, and have keep expanding that bag of tools. <clears throat> the beginning of mastery is that using tools in the right way at the right time as, um, as um, I, I forget who said it, but it was, <clears throat> they, they understand they are gaining their own renown for their own efforts and their own ability. And for me, I always ask the question, uh, is this person fighting? Do they understand that they are fighting for control of the fight? They're not simply going up to their opponent and pulling out every trick, throwing every tool that they have. Are they, do they understand that the real fight is control of the fight? And is that how they fight and how they fight consistently? That is the important measure of the start of mastery. And the, the, the knighthood is not the end of the journey. It's the beginning of the journey of, of mastery. And the journey of mastery in any art form never ends, including the, the fighting arts. So <clears throat> that's what I do. And I, I've been in meetings where a Duke said, well, he can't beat me. And everybody said, your grace, <laughs> that's not an appropriate measure. <clears throat> I've also been in, in meetings where I said, is this person consistently fighting for control of the fight? Is, do they understand that that's where the fight is? And that's an important conversation to have. And that's how I, how I look at it and how I evaluate a candidate. Okay. So, um, who's next? Uh, I, I've got some, I guess, some thoughts, unless he, one of these guys want to jump in. Um, man, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> yeah. This, this is great. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to go ahead and piggyback on what he, uh, Eli was, was just saying. Um, you know, that, that uh, knighthood is the beginning, right? Um, uh, one of the things that I often tell people when, when they uh, achieve the accolade, um, as I, as I tell them, congratulations, you have proven that you are capable of learning our sport. Um, <clears throat> you know, we, we've had this, this comment a couple of times about how, you know, if, if I'm sitting in a circle and I say that somebody's not ready and I've been told, I've been told that before, when I say that they're not ready, that they don't fight well enough, I have been told, well, they shouldn't have to fight as good as you to get knighted. And I totally agree with that. You should not have to be as good as I am now in order to get knighted but with the bar changing and this is something that alan on had had touched on the bar changes right um i mean i ideally our sport should be more advanced now than it was 56 years ago when we started this thing in the first place and and to a lesser degree a, a person should have more technical skill now than i had when i got knighted 34 years ago the the, the sport has changed um, and, and the bar has, has risen with it. And, and really what that all comes down to is it's, it's not, you can't really quantify that and say that I had better footwork or I had better mechanics or, or, or these sort of things. Um, but it's, it's all measured on our contemporaries. It's measured on the, on, on who we are, are elevating, uh, right now. Right. Um, and the fighting is better than it was 30 years ago when I, when I got knighted, um, it's better than, than when Ulrich and, and uh, when all these guys, I mean, the fighting is better now than when we all got knighted. Right. Um, and fighters should, should be expected to, to, to match that. Um, I, I had heard somewhere, I think it was, uh, I think it was our good friend, uh, Sir Helga that had, that had told me that, um, as, as a measure of where that bar is. Um, that's basically the last 10 nights that you've made in your kingdom. If you look at the, the people you've knighted in, in, in the last 10 nights that you've made in your kingdom, which for us is about five years, uh, COVID notwithstanding, because that was, you know, 2020 was four of those years. Um, you know, but the, the last, you know, 10 or so nights, like that's what your bar is because those are the people that, that you are recognizing as being part of your order. And, you know, whatever measure of, you know, footwork or stick mechanics or shield discipline or whatever technical thing we want to look at to be able to say that you have to have these things, 
um, that's that's what your bar is. And 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 I think I think the the ten most recent people that you've added to the order I think is pretty it is going to even out um, because you know as as a as a as I heard in in one of our neighboring kingdoms, uh, not all knights are knights. Um, that there, there are people that get added to, to the order that just simply don't don't meet uh, the the high standards that we have. And you know, as Alan and I was talking about before, you know, it's like it, it, it can't be my my bar can't be the only bar, right? Um, I have very high standards for for my squires, um, you know, but I like I I can't expect everybody that that gets knighted in our kingdom to to live up to what i think should be the ideal of 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 uh, prowess um because it's it's pretty high it's not ducal level but it is it is pretty high and there there are going to be some that don't match that and that's fine right i mean that's why it's an average right um so yeah look at the last 10 people you've knighted and that gives you a better that is a better evaluation of well this one person got knighted and I can kick his ass all day long, or I do more service than that person does. Right. It's like, okay, that one person may be an anomaly, but if you look at the, if you look at the last 10 or so they got knighted, that'll give you a, a pretty good idea of what your bar currently is. Uh, so Alan, on you got next. Yeah. So I think I am part of the balance to you because you have a very high bar. Um, and I think mine's probably pretty low. Uh, Count Framble actually uh, laughs at me and says something that my old friend Duke Seth used to say a lot as well, which is, have, have, have we ever talked about anyone that you didn't like? It's like, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I kind of do like all of them. I mean, I, I like people. Um, and it kind of, again, falls back to the thing of, you know, we already have a ton of knights. What's one more? Um, you know, and I realize I have a really low bar because I'm just not particularly fascinated with the actual act of and first years of a night. Uh, they're, I've seen a lot of them now. And, you know, the exciting thing to me is, is when they figure out that they wanted to be a great knight and they want to be a hero. They want to be a hero of their kingdom, a hero of the society. They want to do, they want to, to find a, their own, you know, and blaze their own path and not just be a, you know, every, all, it's funny because most knights like to think of themselves as some sort of predatory animal. And we're just as herd animal as everyone else. But what I really like are the ones who do try to forge their own path. And if it's, you know, and if we're herd animals, at least it's the ones that are trying to drive the herd into other directions as opposed to just hang out in the center of the pack and, you know, not be picked off by the actual predators. Um, you know, so I, 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 I do have a relatively low bar. I, you know, I want the prowess to be there, but what I think prowess you know, for what, for what I'm looking for, I try very hard to make it be in that last 10 people who've come in. And I think that's, you know, that's kind of, you know, and that's in that last 10, there's going to be people who are really good and people who are so, so, and, and, and if you look at the whole history of, of people getting knighted, um, you know, there, there's any number of people, I think, wow, man, they, they didn't have actually any prowess. So, you know, I, I've never seen it. I'll have to just trust that they had it, especially if they came before me. I'll just have to trust that they had it before I ever met them, you know, because, you know, there's plenty of folks who don't, you know, and it's not an age thing and it's not an injury thing. It's just sort of a, wow, what, what, what was happening that year, you know? <laughs> um, and no offense to anyone, but I also understand how you can take it personally when I say, where the heck is your prowess? You know, you, the minimum things that I look for out of pro S and, and it, I love what, how, uh, his grace Eliyahu said it, you know, it, there's a, a, a level of mastery of understanding, you know, of understanding the basic components. And are you trying to control the fight? Are you fighting to control the fight? That's a beautiful way of saying things. And, you know, I, I do look for that. I look for, you know, and, and I know that they, you know, the fact that they're trying to control a fight against me that, well, that's a check mark. It's not that they get it. They're not going to get it. It's very few people who 
on you know at the on the day of their elevation can actually get control of the fight from me you know but that's not a that's not any reason i should hold them back um i mean i'm still trying to get the control of the fight from you well i mean you know and you know what you're a great knight (laughs) you know you're you're a far far better knight than i am when we think of things like you know the ability to guide students and and squires and move them on i've been very fortunate i've had one of my own squires who who uh was elevated and just like you guys have said i mean i i had like three or four knights catch me in the dark one night in an event and go what is wrong with your squire that you haven't brought him up and i'm like i was waiting for this you know <laughs> you know so thanks uh, i'll get right on it and i guess there's also people from other kingdoms who are like you know you guys bring up your own squires because i kind of yeah. like the idea of not bringing up your own squires i actually kind of like the idea of leaving the room when they get discussed you know it's like maybe i give a thumbs up of yeah i mean i think they're they're there but i don't need to be a part of this conversation anymore you know because with me i don't have a professional relationship with my with my wires and they're not nearly as much students as they legitimately are household members they're people that i came to love and i hope came to love me and we we formed um a a relationship based off of of friendship and respect and love and while i hope that they'll all continue to strive on on the path it's just not the case in a lot of them and i'm not you know i'm not the kind of person that sees it as just a student role and and I helped, I've helped a lot of squires, just not mine. You know, I've been really good at helping other people's squires, but you know, I love mine. And, and if, if they want to work on things, well, then we'll work on things. And if they don't want to work on things, well, then there's people who want to work on things that I'm going to work with. Um, Ulrich. Right. So yeah, great. I get to follow that again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I found my spot in the in, in the in the groove here. It's uh it's, it's falling <laughs> behind the good the, the good stuff. So there's a, a few things that I want I want to touch on here. Um, Sean talked about the the, the bar movie, and I'm, I'm gonna I said this in the chat. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again because I hear that all the time that the bar is so much higher now, and the bar is higher. But by the bar being higher, what it means <laughs> is it's the same height above the ground that it ever was. It's just that the ground has gotten much higher. You know, there's a, a, a thing that I've heard several times. Well, you know, in, in 1978, you got knighted usually in less than five years. It, yeah, everyone got knighted faster in 78 because this sport was just developing in 68 or in, in 68, 78 in that, in that time period. Kingdoms were just forming, you know, so all of that, you know, all of that changes and all that adjusts. And as time goes on, it gets, it gets different. Ilanon uh, mentioned that he didn't care how, how old or young someone was. And I don't either. I don't, you know, if you're, you know, if you're to the point where you're being brought up in the circle, then your prowess level is probably pretty close. And that's, that's a line that at that point, I'm going to look at. Um, will, will you necessarily meet my level of prowess? No, but you're in the conversation, because you're, we're having a conversation about you. Um, so that's something that people need, need to realize. And I don't know about every, everywhere else, but I have never been in a circle where a conversation came up about someone and the, the basis of the conversation wasn't, how can we help this person get in this order? Um, and that's something that, that I think people need to understand. We're not trying to keep people out of this, of this order. We're trying, to, we're trying desperately to bring people into this order. Um, and so if you want help, Shows like this, people like us are here to help you. Um, and we're, we'll help you reach that bar. If that's what, you know, if, it, if it's fighting that, that you lack, we'll help you reach that bar. If it's the other peer like qualities that you lack. Um, and, or if it's just the social graces that you lack, then we'll find someone, because it won't be me, that can help you learn how to do those. <laughs> um, but uh, that, that's just one of the, one of the things we're, we're talking about bars and we're talking about things that we require but the the thing that i want to get out there is that people in these orders are desperately trying to get you into these orders not not the opposite 
And that was the that was the the, the big thing. And the the, the Iliahu comment about the, controlling the good the ones. The good ones, Ulrich, you're right. Yeah, sure. The, yeah, good, sure. the good members of that order are, because I won't lie to folks, there's absolutely, absolutely some people out there who've wrapped up their peerage all about themselves, and they're, they're gatekeepers, and they don't want in anymore, and they need counseling from the rest of us knights. You're, you're, you're absolutely correct. And there's, you know, but I think more, more and more, this is becoming more and more often nowadays, that's becoming less and less, or at least that's what I'm seeing. Um, because, you know, these conversations are happening and, you know, and I think that's a good thing, but to Ilya's point about, about controlling the fight and, and controlling and Ilan and talking about, you know, people having a hard time there, even the point where they're at the point where they're realizing that the fight for the control of the fight is happening before you take the field. If they're starting to learn that, then they're on, they're on the right path of learning control, control of the fight. Um, well, that is something that that Sun Tzu said in the Art of War about defeating your enemy before the the battle commences. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I I do think that it's important for people to understand that generally the order is inclusive; it's trying to be inclusive rather than exclusive. The members of the order who are exclusive, who think that, and I've seen this from some crowns too, who think that anyone else getting an honor or an award somehow dilutes or diminishes theirs. I think those people are, they're, those members of the order, their opinion is by and large discounted because it's understood for what it is. It's dis it exists but is often discounted by the other members of the order as being less valuable counsel because it's not about the candidate, it's about them. Um, I do want to mention that fighting for control is fun. It's actually a fun way to fight. And I remember the last time I fought Elanon and it was far too long ago, he just stopped in the, in, at one point in the middle of the fight and said, I love a chess game like this. And that's what it was, because we that's what we were both we both fighting for control of the fight. And it was it was fun and we both had big smiles on our face. Um I think it's one of the things we we think about is I, I think the idea of can this person be dropped about any peer, can they be dropped into an area and the SCA will grow or survive or thrive around them? But I've also heard it asked. If this person if, is knighted and they are in another kingdom, will they be a good exemplar of our kingdom? Um, and I think that's important also to consider. Um, <clears throat> one of the questions that came up um, online was asking about um, leaders, army leadership or knowing the field. And... I generally, I want to say this, there's been questions raised, I've heard them for a long time. Can somebody be knighted for melee prowess only? Can somebody be knighted for tourney prowess only? Well, it's certainly easier for somebody to get knighted for tourney prowess than for melee prowess, in, depending on the kingdom. But my view is that if I was fighting just for fun, my own fun, I would just fight tournaments. But because as a knight, I'm also serving the kingdom, I also fight in melees and in wars because that is a way of demonstrating service. And I have learned how to do that well. Um, <clears throat> but if somebody only fights melee <clears throat> and is not very as, as competent individually, well, most melees break down at some point and there's some individual combat. And if the person can't fight like a knight individually at that point as by themselves, then that their level of prowess is lacking. So I think, a, and, and I've said this to some knights before, um, and I said this to a knight who, who said if he was, he understood what I was saying from the other point of view, if it was only for fun, he'd just fight melee. 
but he's learned to fight tournament because it's necessary. It's also a form of service. Um, and I've explained to people before that, no, you ha you, you're a knight. You need to do both. You need to do both and you need to be competent at both. Now, leadership skills, leading an army, um, <clears throat> understanding the, the art of war, the arts of war, the how to do that, that's another skill set. And that is understanding the body of the army like your own body and how it moves. That is not in everybody's capacity. So I don't think leadership is necessarily on the field is necessarily a part of um, knightly prowess, but I think being a competent, competent combatant in melee as well as in tourney is a necessary part of a well-rounded knight. Um, Sean, I think you had. Yeah, I was going to let I was going to yeah, let on go first on this one. Thank you so much. Um, so, without a doubt, in my mind, and this is this is very personal for me. Um, a person's leadership could be outstanding qualities that I would look at and go, oh, yes, that, that person is very knightly. Or, and here's a very quick sidebar here. We, we say knightly a lot, and we, we talk about the accolade, and we, we use a lot of expressions to talk about becoming a member of the Order of the Chivalry. And I don't, we don't mean it as a disservice to those people who take the master at arms. Um, you know, Baldrick instead, uh, but for the, for, and I bet I speak for everyone here. I mean, I, I hate to speak for people, but I bet still, I bet I speak for, we still come up from a very knight centric perspective on it. While we respect those who've taken the Baldrick instead, uh, our language has been built around more how we say things. And so to, for those of you who are out there who actually see yourself as pursuing a path to hope to one day become elevated into the order of the chivalry and you intend to take a, a, a baldric instead of a belt, uh, or to those people who already have uh, and have taken the baldric, we don't mean it as a disrespect. It's just the length. And maybe at one point we'll figure out better ways to say it. Um, I personally wish we could go back in time and have come up with a much better way of handling uh, masters at arms and, and the order of the chivalry. And we're all somehow knights of something and else. And we could just use this language for it, but we're, we're not going back in time at this point, but I just want you to know, we don't mean it as a disrespect if we say it the way we say it. And, and the requirements for the chivalry are exactly the same for um, knights or masters. They are, they are. Um, so um, back to the battlefield. Uh, your prowess on the battlefield um, absolutely is a, a means by which I might think of you as a level uh, or the chivalric bar. Your ability to lead on the battlefield is a means. Do I look for all candidates to have the same leadership level on 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 the battlefield? The same way Duke, Duke Eliyahu said, no, that that's a skill set that not everyone has. And if everyone had it, we would be the most chaotic armies in the world. We're already pretty darn chaotic to begin with. If we all were <laughs> quote unquote, good leaders, we'd all be trying to lead. Um, um, so, but the way I, I, you know, it's important, it's there. And I think that it's great. That's, let me talk to a little bit about, you know, um, you know, all the things that make you or these things into a jar and you're looking for the jar to hit this line up here and then perhaps some section of the jar is your prowess and maybe for a lot of guys you know it's like that's that much of it you know it's the big part of the jar and then there's the service and then there's the this and then their commitment you know these are things i've also heard in night circles by the way and i've I've never heard them in any other circle, but you know, well, what is their commitment to the arts? So, you know, how do they support the service and how do they support, you know, at this point, we even ask, how do we support uh, the masters of defense? And I've never heard anyone in the Laurel circle go, how do they support fighting? But, um, you know, but it, I've heard that in, in night circles. And, and so all this stuff is filling up this jar but the way it actually can work for me is prowess, as long as it's enough, 
as long as it's a maybe you're short on some of those other things, but then maybe you're really full on your ability to lead. Then you hitting my overall bar. So, you know, can people have more of one thing and more of another? In my opinion, yes. A lot of people have it, you know, as long as, you know, yes, but only if they hit the prowess I'm looking for. Um, you know, and every every night has to decide that differently. And as we talked about, you know, earlier, probably that just changes over time. And I've seen it change from meeting to meeting. Um, so, uh, yes, good question about uh, the battlefield. And, and for me personally, it definitely makes a difference. And I've seen it. It makes a big difference in some kingdoms. Probably there's some places where it makes difference however. So I'm, I'm real familiar yeah. with the the glass or jar um, uh, metaphor myself. Uh, the the concept being that you've got this this glass and the glass is made of your, of your prowess and you pour everything else into it. And if there's the glass isn't big enough to hold the other stuff, then you're probably you know you're probably not there yet. Otherwise, all your stuff falls out on the on the table. Um, but I wanted to hit right quick because. Um, Sean brought it up earlier, and we're talking about the requirements for for being a uh, being a knight and the the melee portion. Absolutely, melee is, melee is a bit of a thing. But in corpora, it states the candidate must be considered to be the equal of his or her prospective peers in the basic weapons of tournament combat. It does not say they must be a tournament god. It does not say they must be you know amazing in tournaments. It says they must be the peer with with tournament with, with weapons of tournament combat. So I don't care if that, that happens to be come on the, on the war field or the tourney field, but like Eliyahu said, if that tournament, if that melee breaks down and you can't hold your own with the spear, glaive, whatever that you happen to have in your hand, when it becomes a one-on-one -on -one fight, then you're probably not there. But leadership, absolutely. Being a knight, being a leader, being first and foremost on the field, um, that can be you know, the person who, who leads by example, uh, leading the charge, taking in charge of a line or leading an army, as that case may be. Um, that's absolutely something. If the, if, the, if the people in the army don't respect you enough to follow you, they're probably not going to think you're a much of a knight if you get, if you get recognized as one. And that's something that we absolutely pay attention to. Yeah. Uh, so my, my take on this is... Um, uh, ultimately, knighthood is an individual accomplishment. Um, I've heard the argument that this person is a really great leader on the field and that they should be knighted um, because they, they, they lead people into the battle. Ultimately, it's an individual accomplishment. We have to be able to recognize you as an, as an individual. However, leadership is absolutely a thing that we expect people to be able to do. And 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 that is not simply on the battlefield. I mean, you, you have to be a leader in your community. You have to be supporting the community, the fighting community at large. And and there just really is no better way to learn the leadership that we required outside of doing melee combat. So while it is an individual accomplishment. Um, you need to be able to learn how to support the community and lead the community. And, and, you know, there's just, there's, there's no substitute for being able to do that in the thick of battle when, you know, you know, as, as, as Alan alluded to, if we were all the best, you know, if we were all the best in twos, um, then it would just be, you know, a nightmare chaos scenario where everybody's trying to follow everybody else. But, you know, part of that is being able to know when to, you know, when to charge and when to pull back and, and those things. Um, my experience too on that is, and, and I, I may be in the minority here, but my experience has always been that better tourney fighters make better war fighters. Uh, and I, and I've heard people say the opposite, that better war fighters make better tourney fighters. But my, my take has always been that better tourney fighters, better individual fighters, um, make better war fighters. Um, but, yeah, it's an individual accomplishment, but you have to learn that leadership somewhere. And there's just no better place to do that than on the battlefield. And in addition to that, you know, we're always talking when we talk about the bar, I've always referred to this as the evolution of our sport, right? Where our support, sh our sport should be better now than it was 50 years ago. 
Um, we do that in, in tournament. We do that in the pickup fields. We should be doing that in the melee fields as well, right? There, there are people who come to our society. They're not interested in being tournament fighters. They're interested in, in you know, getting their war on. And there's no reason that we can't do both and that we can't, you know, we go, go, we, we do all of these scenarios and we say, oh, well, we're going to try this. Right. And it either works or it doesn't. And if it works, we're like, Hey, let's do that again. Or let's do that until they figure out something else. And let's do that until they stop it. Right. And then we try something else and it just doesn't work. And then we try something and try something and try something. And, you know, that is the evolution of our sport just in a different, a different facet of it. A um, couple of comments before we move on to another question. Um, regarding leadership, I completely agree. Leadership can be demonstrated in a, lots of different ways. Um, in training, in teaching, in, in helping, in, in supporting, in following someone else's lead, you are demonstrating to people that you don't always have to be in charge. You're demonstrating humility. And I think that's important too. Um, my father was a jazz drummer and he, he, there's a famous quote he used to tell me that a good player sometimes plays lead and sometimes plays sideman and can switch between them. And I think that that's a, uh, I think that's a great, the, I often quote my parents because they were the old saying, the older I get, the smarter they were. Um, I think that's really important. Sometimes you are a good member of a team and sometimes you're leading the team. And when you're put in charge, take charge. But if somebody else in char is in charge, show them the same respect you want someone to show you when you're in charge. Um, there's an, there's a, some, I'll come back. I have another, I'm on a different subject, but there's some questions that I want to, that we should get to. And I'll come back to my other comment later. So, um, who, um, Elnan, you had a uh, comment about this question for um, things that can hold someone back on the path. Yes, let me read the question as it was written. Um, this comes from Louis. Uh, what are the thoughts about the things that can hold someone back on the path to knighthood, even though the prowess may be at or well above the bar? Specifically, what makes you hit the no button and in what ways uh, would the candidate be counseled? So I will, I will start the, with the answer to that question, but I want to circle back to the first part real quickly. The things about prowess that make me hit no, apart from the obvious, you know, they just don't have it, is wild inconsistency. Um, I've seen people who, you know, they, they, they were like third or fourth or second, even in a tournament one week and the next week, you know, couldn't fight their way out of a wet paper sack. And that inconsistency is a no for me. Um, I would rather they were middle of the pack consistently and then working on trying to get better than, than have those just wild discrepancies. It's like, what is wrong this? I mean, you're not the same fighter this week. So those are one of my no's for prowess, but on the other, and this is, again, this falls into the whole realm of all the peerages when I'm fortunate enough to be in a position to have some judgment uh, with them. Um, and I go back to, uh, I don't even remember what, what night it could have been like uh, maybe Sir Robert of Ock, uh, who told me at one point or shared something similar. It's like, you know, do I trust the person with my kids and do I trust them with my wallet? And if I can't trust them with either of those two things, then that's a straight up no. Um, you know, and I guess that extends back and it's, you know, falls back in our sort of old, uh, you know, extra, you know, gentlemanly and hopefully not too mis mis misogynistic ways of, uh, you know, and do I trust them with my lady? So that doesn't have to always be the same anymore, but do you trust them with your spouse, um, you know, to, to, you know, uphold whatever it is you think. So it, those three things, and those are character driven things. And those are no's to me. If I can't trust them on, on one of those things, then, and, and how do I counsel them? I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't counsel that. Uh, I don't know how to counsel that. That's, those are major character flaws. The, 
the all the other things are just things to work on, you know. Um, so, but those are the biggest no's that just will absolutely um, shut me down right there. So pass it off to if anyone actually has wanna, ways to fix those or their own. Well, I want to briefly add to that because it's something that I wanted to circle back to that I, I said I was going to say. We think of a person be gaining knighthood through prowess, but it's important to ask how someone can lose knighthood. And it's never through a loss of prowess. It's always through bad behavior. And so I think Elnan's question about the person's character, their conduct, their quest, is are they trustworthy or as, as I would say, I, I wouldn't vote, I wouldn't counsel knighting someone who's not a mensch. And if you mensch is Yiddish for somebody who's a good, trustworthy, dependable person, a stand-up person, a, somebody who's trustworthy. Great word. Um, and but I've I've seen I've known people who have been lost their knighthood. And it was through their behavior. It wasn't through a loss of prowess. Everybody's prowess declines over time, eventually. Um, <clears throat> but it, yeah, so it's imp also important. One of the things that I do, um, I used to do, my members of my household ran the list table at Crown Tournament for a long time, though we never told anybody that because I didn't want there to be any appearance of any consider any impropriety. So it was it was kept pretty much um, quiet, but they were doing it because they were really good at it. <clears throat> but I would ask them after every crown tournament, how did these people tell me how these people behaved when they came up to talk to you? When they're not showing because you're not members of the order of chivalry, how do these I want to know how the knights behaved you. I want to know how the unbelts behaved you. I want to know how they behave to people from whom they think they have nothing to gain. And whether or not <clears throat> that's, because we talk about somebody just playing to the chivalry, trying to appear good to them, but they behave badly to other people. I want to know that. So I ask people outside the order, people whose opinion I value, how these, what they think of, of this person, a person's character. And I think that's important because um, people can evolve, people can grow, people can change. But um, if somebody's dug themselves a hole <clears throat> by their behavior, they first have to fill it in to get back to level before they can start building their renown. And that can take a while to do. So, um, Sean, I think you're next. I had some, a little bit of a follow up on this. So, um, something that, that Alan on and, and Eli had both kind of uh, alluded to a little bit. Um, one of the things that we've, that, that I've, I've certainly seen, and I, I'm sure all these other guys have, have seen this as well, is you, you, you know, again, the prowess in and of itself, like, it's that's that's not enough i mean just just kicking ass is not enough um to, to get you the accolade and one of the things that that i've seen just far too much of over the years is that that candidate who well, i mean first off you know when you're being discussed you know when you are a a, a candidate of, of some discussion um you know we we've occasionally heard the uh the thing well so and so knows that we're talking about them so somebody must have broken circle um nobody has to break circle for you to know that you're being discussed in the circle right i mean you like let's give some credit to the unbelted fighters they're not that dumb and we're not that subtle um so so that comes up <clears throat> and when you know that you're being discussed it, it is a really really difficult uh, place to be and how you handle being in that fishbowl goes a long way towards whether or not you are eventually recognized. And one of the things that we hear a lot of is, or that I, I certainly have, and I, maybe these other guys can agree, but 
when you see that candidate who knows they're being discussed and somebody else gets knighted and they say, why is that guy getting knighted and I'm not getting knighted because I can kick his ass six ways from Sunday. And so when we talk about the stuff that is not prowess related that, that comes into it, um, you know, it, it is, it, it, knight, knighthood is a, and the order of the chivalry is a worthy endeavor that you should want to be part of, right? Um, it's one thing to want to be part of it is something else entirely to be covetous of the accolade. And when you are looking at somebody else and saying, I'm better than them, I should be knighted. Um, when you're asking that question, how come that guy's getting knighted and I'm not? The answer is because you're asking why that person is getting knighted. And, and, and that, that, is, that is a whole, it, it kind of encompasses a whole host of things that, that kind of relate to this question as to some of the things that are, that'll hold you back. But, you know, ultimately when, when you're looking at somebody else and you're saying that I'm better than that person and I should be, I should be added. And, and every time that I've seen this phenomenon happen where somebody gets that covetous nature and they, they, they ask that question, ultimately what happens is eventually they say, you know what, screw those guys. They're going to knight me when they're, when they're going to knight me. I'm just going to try to be the best knight I can. I'm going to be a better fighter. I'm going to like, I'm just going to be who I am. And, and that is really the moment where once you finally let go of that, again, covetous, I mean, that's the only way I can, I can describe it really. Um, once you, once you're able to let go of that and you're, and you're able to just try to be more knightly to do knightly things instead of doing things to get knighted though that's that's when when you're finally able to let go um that ultimately that's when it happens and again to get back to the you know you know just like porn i know when i see it sort of thing it is just one of those moments when when you see somebody genuinely let go of that concern it's it is liberating for the candidate and it is plain as the nose on your face for us. We see it and go, he's ready. So can I get dovetail on that for a second? So one of the things that happens is that because you know, you're right, we are not subtle at all uh, as, as, as an order. Um, but not only is there that portion where people figure out and how they deal with it, but there's this there's this thing that happens and it's, it's, it happened with me. I'm pretty sure it happened with all of us at, at one point where your peers, small P, your, you know, your contemporaries come up to you and they say, man, why haven't you been knighted yet? It's the worst thing that you're, I know that you guys are trying to pay, that we are trying to pay compliments to our friends. We're trying to tell them how, how awesome we think they are. These are the absolute worst thing you can do to them. Please, please, please stop. Just stop if you want to tell someone hey if you want to know why you know or let the, the knights know their, their chivalry know why someone has you know you think someone should be knighted write a letter come up to us and tell us don't tell them please that's, that's the one thing i had on that but yep stop stop helping yeah <laughs> you're not happy i have a i have a well, question I have a, for Ulrich in the okay. same kind of context here real quick but that's always so funny because I, I just thinking it back real quick, because uh, if anyone asked me that before I was knighted, I was like, you obviously weren't at the revel last night or you'd know why I'm not a knight. <laughs> so. Um, so Louis's question actually was about things that could be counseled. So things that could be counseled uh, are things like calibration or uh, uh, some a seeming, la you know, disrespectful way of fighting, perhaps, or, you know, there's lots of things, you know, that, that still can fall into the prowess perspective of things that could be counseled. And there's definitely ways to do it. And I've definitely had those conversations with people. But I also know that uh, His Excellency Ulrich has too. So, Ulrich, how do you handle, uh, you know, a, an up and coming uh, person candidate who has a problem with either their calibration or perhaps their general demeanor on the field? Um, how do you, how do you handle that with them? There, well, there's a difference in how I used to handle them and how I handle them now. Um, I was, and I, I think this is part of where Elon is going with this. I, I was a very, um, blunt person when I was, uh, a younger, uh, 
person both in, in life and in the SCA. And I would just straight up on the field be, you know, be like, um, <laughs> somebody in that fight needs to call something. And I don't really care which one of you it is, but one of you needs to be dead. Um, but now I'm a lot more, uh, more subtle about it. Uh, um, if, if that situation comes up, I'll generally try to talk to the person on the side. If I'm marshalling the field, I will call the fighters in to discuss uh, something. And that's, that's an issue that you're dealing with in the moment. Um, outside of the moment, um, I generally don't call people out in public anymore unless they don't give me any other option. Um, we have sometimes in the chivalry have a, uh, a, it sticks to us sometimes that we will call out an undult for, for poor behavior, but we won't call out uh, one of our brothers or sisters for poor behavior on the field. And uh, I have tried to be even handed with that. So if you leave us no other option on, than to call it out on the field, I will still do that, but it has to be pretty horrible. Um, but outside of that, off to the side, having that conversation and when they get defensive and inevitably the, the people's first reaction to being called out on their, either their, their attitude or their calibration or whatever, um, their first response is usually to be defensive. And that's when you explain to them that if I didn't care, if I wasn't trying to make you better, better, if I wasn't trying to help you, I would not be talking to you. I would just let you go on like this and suffer with the, the poor renown or the infamy that you're gaining. Um, so you make sure that they understand that it's coming from a, from a point or a place of caring and wanting them to be better and make it. Is that, is, is that what you're going for there, Your Grace? Absolutely. I, I don't necessarily need any stories about <laughs> asking the candidate to come into the dark cabin and there's like 12 nights and it's like, we need to talk. <laughs> really trying to avoid that one. <laughs> <laughs> Our heart was in a good place, but sometimes we weren't always executing well. I was going to say, that sounds like a really specific example. It is, a, it's, it is, it is not as specific as, as I would like to, if I would like it to be, but it is, uh, there has been uh, a couple of times when uh, we've had to have a uh, come to deity of your choice meeting with a, with a candidate, uh, whether they were going to continue to be on the path or they were going to be cut loose, essentially. And for the most part, it's always worked. And, and to be fair, they did start with the line. The reason we're having this conversation is because we want you to get better. If we didn't think that you could get better or we didn't think you were a good person, this conversation would be more like you need to get a new hobby. But yeah, and, and the reason, I think I think it goes back to Eli's point earlier that, that for the most part, we want people to be part yeah. of this order. Yeah. And to that, I I want to add to something that that in the same same way we coach and teach and train the fighting art. It is also possible to coach, teach, and train behavior. We can counsel people about their behavior. It's challenging to do. People have to understand that they, this is in their own interest to do this. That, <clears throat> um, because I've seen plenty of people um, say they can't defeat themselves before they start. And that can happen with fighting. Say, oh, I can't beat that guy. And so they go out there and they lose. But I've also seen people say, I can't behave with this kind of, I can't master these kinds of social niceties, behaviors, use of speech, um, politeness, courtesy, other things that are valued social skills that in total comprise what we, some of what we think of as peer like behaviors. Yeah, that can be coached. One of the things though, that I think we all do is we'll see somebody who would benefit from being a dependent, from being a squire, from being a student, but not necessarily for us. And we will recommend to another night, this person, and this night, you would be a good, you, my brother, you should look at 
this person as a, a squire or a student because your skills and your abilities match up with exactly what they need. And, and I've done that for others. Others have done that for me, saying this person needs these things and you, know, you can help them with that. And I, I think that um, <clears throat> one of the challenges though of <clears throat> finding someone who were say coaching on their behavior rather than just on their fighting <clears throat> is that it's important if people learn those skills, learn how to behave better, that it's not simply performative, that they're not simply doing it to please the order so they can get elevated. It's important that it becomes internalized and in an integral part of their character. That's very hard to, um, to really evaluate um, without getting to know someone really well. And, doing some of what we said, seeing how they behave with other people and so on. So um, <clears throat> there's a question, have you seen a candidate become elevated too early? And how do you think this affects them as a member of the order? Um, <clears throat> I, I've seen people in all peerages elevated too soon and disappear because they weren't ready for the responsibility of being a peer. That was the main thing that they weren't ready for. Um, <clears throat> I did see someone knighted and the, was close enough to hear the king bend down and whisper to the candidate, don't embarrass me. And the this is somebody who the order had counseled against elevating, but the king was set on it. And that person eventually was removed from the order um, <clears throat> by a nearly unanimous uh, signing of a letter of the order um, asking this person to be removed from the order. And so, yeah, that person was elevated too soon. Um, I, be, but it was not because of their prowess, it was because of their character and their behavior. And as I said before, people may get elevated for their prowess, but they, the people who have lost knighthood have lost so because of their behavior. Uh, who's I think, next? I think it's a good question, um, the way it was asked, but <clears throat> I'd, I'd, I'd like to try to put at least my perspective on it. Everyone's journey is different and everyone the path that they're taking is all going to be different when you get elevated you got elevated is it too soon you know it it's the it was your path so you now you have to kind of understand what to do with it and i have i have advised um candidates on the eve of their elevation or immediately after as like you don't have to do everything immediately. You know, you actually can take the time to learn what kind of peer you're going to be and how you're going to, you know, and grow into it. And you're going to grow the rest of your life into your peerage. You don't have to do it all tomorrow. Um, so take your time. And, and so if anyone is actually thinking that, you know, they got, um, they accepted the accolade too early. And again, <laughs> You have to accept the accolade in this situation. And, you know, if you don't wish to become elevated, you don't have to be elevated. So if you personally feel strongly, if the candidate themselves feel strongly, it's like, I will respect you more than anything. If you say not yet, please, you know, I, th that's not going to be a, that's not, I'm not going to think that your character's wrong. I'm going to think your character's strong. If you think that, and, and you feel strongly about it, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, but that's probably not what, what Louie means by the question. It's someone else. They probably thought they were just fine ready. And then it turns out they weren't ready for the experience. And I, sometimes I think that's because we put too much pressure on peers to be experienced peers immediately. Um, and that's just not possible. And, um, you know, and then sometimes I guess it's just people weren't ready and, you know, the, the order got excited about something and recommended to the crown and the crown got excited and boom, it all happens. And, you know, 
I guess that happens occasionally, but I think it, it all happens about the same all through the SCA, whether it's the kingdoms that are really strong with the crowns kind of drive things or, you know, the kingdoms that are really strong where, um, you know, the orders kind of drive things, you know, if mistakes are made, then as an order, we owe it to that candidate to rally around them and help them become uh, and grow into their, their peerage. You know, then, then we just, you know, we don't stop helping each other uh, become a knight just because you became a knight. We can, we, and I hope, and I've had, I think I've been very fortunate that I've had, I've had really important people in my life help me become a knight long after I was knighted. And, and I hope it never stops. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, you, you raise an, an important point there, especially for those of us who have uh, set the throne and have made peerages of other orders. You know, that 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 thing you were talking about there, Eleanor, where uh, there, you know, people get excited. And um, and I, for, for me, this has happened with the other orders where, you know, the laurels of the Pelicans come to us and say, um, hey, you need to make this person a member of our order. And we're like, do I like, okay, well, I mean, that's, that's, that's what you guys want. Then I guess that's what we're going to do. Uh, you know, and sometimes it's, it's nice to kind of have that kind of mandate, right. Where, because it just, you know, all the evaluation that we have to do is to, you know, it's like, do we, don't we, do we, don't we, when you have the order that makes that kind of demand, um, even if you're not part of the order that you're, that you're recognizing for somebody for, you know, they get all excited. And, and sometimes you just, you kind of have to go with that. And, Sometimes it pans out and sometimes it sometimes it doesn't. So if if, if folks are aren't ready on a for the ship for chivalry, if they're not ready on a PLQ or a, 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 a some of the virtues or just the ability to be a the peer portion of of being a chivalry, we can rally around them and, and help them with that. One of the places that we have problem though is when their prowess wasn't actually ready, because the day the event after you get knighted. There will be a line of squires around the block to mark where, you know, to find out where they are on, on that bar, right? And I have, I have seen it, I think we've all seen it, where that person wasn't ready and they took a huge humility hit. They had, you know, to, and that's the, the next mark of a peer is how they react to taking that, that beating from the, from the friends of theirs that were trying to figure out where they are on the in the pecking order um next how they how they react to it do they do they sell up and go away do they find find people you know do they come to 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 sean or alan or Eliyahu and go holy crap i need help do, do they check check that ego at the door and go holy crap i need help what you know i need to to, to step up and that's when we know when we've got the right I mean, one of the ways one of the many ways we know when we've got the right one and it's our job to help them there too because once once they're in they're part of us and you know how i know when we didn't get it right instead of coming and asking for help they're like hey i want to teach a class at the next collegium <laughs> Ugh. i'm right here i'm right here <laughs> well, that was that was the comment that I made uh, when Louie asked this question is like, if, if somebody, if somebody feels like they're not ready, if, if, if they want help, I will move heaven and earth uh, to, to help them be better knights. Uh, and if they, if they think, to this point, if they think, you know, it's about time you guys knighted me, there's no helping that person. Yeah, and, and I, I, I have this actually, as uh, you know, I teach. And I, I will, if a student wants help, and I, I mean in the SCA and fighting in anything or in my, my regular classes, if a student wants help and they're trying, I will continue to work with them and help them until it, or if it gets to a point where it's clear they want me to do it for them or they don't really want to keep learning or they there's they aren't they don't really they just want to get the grade or get the the belt or get something without actually doing the the hard work to get there and actually mastering it so yeah that can be it's very frustrating 
when you because like i said we we want people as a as an order every order in every kingdom is inclusive and that <clears throat> wants to be inclusive and welcome people in so um <clears throat> with that any final comments gentlemen Let's, well, let, let's let Ulrich go first. There you go. <laughs> yeah. We'll reverse the order here. <laughs> Thanks. Um, you know, so at first I went in order of um, um, order of precedence. Because it's right. So, so, so going reverse although, order. Now, although, so. although I put myself out of humility, I put myself last. <laughs> so, okay. Awesome. Um, I just really want to reiterate uh, a point that. Uh, we've all made throughout the show is that we're willing, you know, for the most part, Elon, for the most part, we're all willing to help. Most member, most, the great portion of the members of the order of chivalry are here to, to help you get into our order. We want you to be part of us. And while we all have, you know, different, different views of, of, and different levels of what we required to, to, to support you as a, as a candidate, we all want you to make that level. We all want you to be to be in the order. And uh, if you, you know, don't be afraid to come up and, and ask. That's what we're here for. We all love to teach. Are we reversing precedence? I don't know. Is that, uh, is that Alan on goes first, or that that'd be me? I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um. This has been a really fun episode. I really find, uh, you know, conversations on how people do their evaluations uh, to be just endlessly fascinating. I, I talk about it with people at events. You know, I'm very curious as to how my peers, both small P, big P, um, you know, think about it and what their criteria are. And I, 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 I observe and watch other people in circles um you know because i'm just kind of curious as to where people's heads are because i'm also constantly always reevaluating my methods and my bars in my evaluation process and you know so i look both to the people that i respect and to the people maybe i don't respect as much to help me kind of form new new thoughts and opinions on it so i look i also look forward to the part two uh, of this, where we talk uh, really about some more specifics of how kingdoms, both philosophically and procedurally, um, you know, arrive to these decisions. And I think we're going to have a lot of fun with that too. So I just would like to thank my fellow host and thank all the people who showed up this evening to ask us their questions for being a part of this stream. It's been a lot of fun tonight. Yeah, this is this has been a great episode. Um, honestly, this could probably be two or three episodes. There's so many things that I, I'm I'm even taking notes, and there's so much stuff that like, oh, we got to talk about that and that and that. Um, yeah, ultimately, when we when we break this all down, um, to to me, all the peerages um, are um, equal parts, uh, one part prowess, one part franchise. Um, this is a fighting order and you need to distinguish yourself as, as a, as a fighter. Um, because that is the distinguishing characteristic of the order. It's not because fighting is more important than franchise. And when I say franchise, I mean, everything else that is the SCA, everything that is about the SCA. And, and I think that's true of all peerages. Um, but the, the thing that makes each of the peerages different is the prowess and you have to distinguish yourself within, within those, those orders of, of prowess. Um, but, it, but they are equal parts. Um, and that's something else that we've, we've mentioned throughout the night is peer like qualities. And, you know, you, you don't, you don't get here just on kicking ass, right. Um, you gotta be, gotta be a good person as well. Um, the other thing I, I wanted to mention is uh, something that I highlighted and underscored in my notes is, uh, you know, when we talk about the bar and we talk about, um, you know, the, the, you know, what it takes. I'd had a good friend of mine who, who had been knighted many, many years before me. Um, what's that, like 10 years? Um, <laughs> he'd once said, uh, if I had to get knighted now, there's no way I would, I would 
get knighted. Right? Like this is just the bar is too high. And my answer to that was always ban and remains. It's effort. It's the amount of effort that you put into it. And regardless of how high the bar has has risen or how high the ground, as as Ulrich put it, how high the ground is has has risen, um, the training methodology has risen commensurate to that, right? The, the the base that we're starting from is higher than it was 30 years ago when I got knighted. And the the same amount of effort that it took to get knighted in 1978, when you put in that much effort now you're going to get knighted just like before. And, and I think Eleanor was kind of making that point too. It's like, it's like, where, where, you know, where was your prowess and when, when was that prowess? But it's, 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 it's the effort. The amount of effort is the distinguishing characteristic in whether or not you get knighted. You put in the work, you're going to get recognized. So, so. I will, I will uh, conclude, I think, Thank you, everybody. I, I just want to say that, um, yeah, we. It, I I I found this very illuminating, and uh, as always, uh, when I hear some gem of wisdom from somebody, I will, um, yeah, I will use it. I'll incorporate it into what I say, trying to credit them um, when I when I remember, and um, <clears throat> and I think this is. Uh, some very useful stuff and that knighthood is not the achieving the accolade is not the end it's a it's a it's a point on the on the path and um we can talk about what that ultimate path is and uh, at length and and often do but uh for now i think this has been uh, um i hope you found it useful i found it really fascinating uh, sharing our our ideas and our thoughts and our methods uh, in this episode, and I think hey, that's Eli. Before we go, uh, yeah. next week's episode. Oh uh, yeah, um, next week we have uh, the West Kingdom uh, Part Two: Heroes and Traditions. Um, when we started doing this series, uh, we quickly found out that for these first uh, handful of kingdoms, there is <coughs> way too much to talk about. So it's going to be uh, two parts for each. So next Friday, uh, we're going to have uh, Duke James Greyhelm and Viscount Leitolf uh, on again um, to kind of kind of pick up where we left off. I think Elanon was kind of kind of leading that. Um, but, uh, you know, as soon as we started in, you, you barely got into the 80s, right? Yeah, we we got to Jade and we we just mentioned his name and it was time to go. So we've got a lot more to go and I'm really looking forward to it. But it's been great. Um, and I, I really think that uh, that there's a lot of neat information coming out of these deep dives into the kingdom's traditions and uh, fighting. Uh, so, yep, uh, that's that should be fun. Yeah, thanks for the plug. Next, that's next week. Okay, uh, I think that's it then. Um, thank you, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next week. All right, thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Night.